Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Well, this happened on this Thursday, the 24th of October. Uh, the Dow is uh, down 100, and we'll talk about that in a moment. I just want to show you this chart right here. <clears throat> this is the 10-minute uh, S&P e Mini. Look how that two, that orange 200-period moving average became a resistance level, a support level, and then a resistance level. So that is over uh, at 58.60. So that means any any really strong rally, that's the, the level that it has to contend with to break above and then hold and, and treat it as a propellant line rather than the magnet that keeps grabbing the price and then pushing it back down. We'll see what happens. So I wanted to also mention that um, you had a peak D right there at about four, about five o'clock this morning, Eastern time, then it comes back down, holds very nicely on the 200 period moving average. Look, that green nine period moving average never never once failed. It was It's remained green all the way through the next A, peak B, higher C, peak D, and then a peak E with a sharp pullback. And now it's really up to the market to say, well, what is next? So now I need to go to this. I'm going to show you the Dow chart. This is something that I had considered. And I thought, well, with the strength of the 914, I'm going to just stick with a fairly standard uh, notation. So this is what we had. Uh, it's a little messy, isn't it? So going to the start of August, where we, we were long right there from the low of August the 5th, we still actually along the position. What we're looking at is we went to a peak A, peak B, and I had trouble. I, had, I kept saying, I think that this B is so close that it might become a phantom B, but I just left it at that. Then we got a formal B and then a C, and then we pulled back very sharply from 41,585 in the Dow. Made a cup formation, broke out. And I continued the notation to D, E, F, then we pulled back, and then we ran up again, and went to B, and then C. And that C, I, I'd been looking at it and saying, I don't know, is, have I miscounted there? Let's just be careful. So in the interim period, we've taken off from our core positions, we've taken lots of very nice uh, small gains. Now we have a fairly high cash position. But I did not go short. And one of the things that I was looking at, I must, I must do this uh, in conjunction with the S&P, which did formally go to a peak D. Now, one of the reasons is it went to this peak C1, C2 top at 56.51 back in end of August, beginning of September, pullback. And then I considered this as a brand new start of a, of a move to the upside, peak A, peak B, another C1, C2, and then... I had a, a signal that was a buy signal that went to a buy mode to a peak A, gray A, then a B, C, and then a formal D. D in the Chapman methodology is where other things can happen. That's your target, and that's where you want to be prepared. Yellow light, just for a moment, to say, is this where we pull back sharply, or is this where we continue? Well, so far, we've pulled back. I wouldn't even call this sharply. We've pulled back. Mm. Let me just see if I can do it from... In, a, in the point of view, since so many of you use Fibonacci, I'll do this. And talking about Fibonacci, don't forget, tomorrow Larry does his show. It should be a great one, a live show, training show. So there was a pullback, 7... Uh, all right, 7, 6. So this, is, this did pull back to one of the levels yesterday, had a, a small Chapman Wave red Roman candle. So far, it's in the body of the candle. And the 914, I have to just go to this, and let me make it much clearer. This is the S&P. This is the Dow. Look, the 9 is still way over the 14. There's the grape, the gray, thick gray line is the price of the Dow. This is a daily chart. Oops, this is a weekly chart. Let's go to the daily chart. Okay, right there. So the daily chart, the price of the Dow has gone way underneath. But look, the 9 period moving average is still holding very well. It's done this before. It never went pink, and then it turned sharply higher. 
I don't know if that's going to be the case here. You've got a number of Dow stocks that are just, I mean, IBM got pummeled. All right, but look at the S&P, SPX.X. There it is. So that pulled back, and that nine-period moving average is still very strong. So now let me go back to the story to show you what I'm really looking at. So that's that's the um, S&P. Look at the QQQ. It went to an alternate count F slash C underneath the previous 503.32 high of, I think it was June. And um, it's trading at 491.45 of 3.08. And that nine period moving average is still good. Weekly chart is still very good. And the weekly chart still has this rising highs and, and uh, rising lows that should go just under, right on or just above the previous side, which would be 503.32. And then you've got to be careful. All right? So, and, and leg C, if, the, if the, in the monthly chart went to a peak C, if it goes to 503.33, that starts a leg D. And then you've got to be careful because you finally got the monthly chart going to that fourth highest peak, peak D, where other things can happen in the monthly chart. IWM went to a peak E, if there's an uh, alternate count, it's still an alternate count E slash A, but the 227.17 high of a week or so ago is higher than the 224.95, so you've got this cup formation. If you look at the vertical line, you'll see that the technicals actually were quite strong. Yes, the rent of strength has pulled back, and we're within a fraction of the nine-period moving average going pink, but it hasn't yet. And the, the, I, the IWM Russell 2000 is up 85 cents at 220.12 right now. So within that context, let's also look at the SMHs, SMHs, uh, also the lines over the 14, it's up $1.31 and 250.35, made it peak D. This rectangle formation says that this is the one that very often has the dreaded H pulling back and taking out the left side low. Let's go to NVIDIA, which of course is the benchmark, has a very a mini uh, pattern that's all, it's almost the same, but it's much higher. Went to an all-time high with a doji candle at 144.42. Uh, we had that round number of 138 on the 21st as, as a low. We're at 140.47. We're over that. That's important. And uh, let's see if there are any other round numbers so far. No, I'm watching that very closely. So let me go back now and I'll show you what I've got as an alternative count. I have to consider it, but it really is secondary at this particular point. I'm still of the belief that there's enough residual strength that there should be an attempt to maybe get close to the 43,325 all-time high in the Dow. So this is the alternate count. So that, the big, thick, pink um, symbols, peak A, peak B, where I've got uh, a phantom peak because the high was, in fact, 40,907.32 and a point and a half higher at 40,909.32. 38, I'm calling that a B. Then you go to a C and then a formal D, pulls back, and now we've started a new move to the upside from the uh, September low. And you go peak A, peak B, peak C. The nine period moving average did not go negative, so this could in fact still be an ongoing move. D and then maybe an E. I have to consider that's a possibility. I, I do not like these alternate counts. I like to have it as straightforward as possible. But my methodology said, don't ignore an alternate count. I'll be right back. The Dow is down 124. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back. So I, I want to mess around with this other than to say if there was, a, if I had identified that as a potential PD at 43,325 in the Dow, <clears throat> besides keeping the call, uh, three times long, as well as our long, very long-term diamonds, I would have had a, a trading, I would have said to subscribers, consider to have a trading short position. Um, I'm not sure if I would have used it on the S&P or whether I would have had it on the Dow, but it would have been just a trading position for those who wanted to be uh, short. And that kind of messed me up. And as I'm looking at it right now, <clears throat> I'm still seeing Residual strength, and I'm still seeing the weekly charts. Absolutely, look at this weekly chart. The price is way over the nine, now it's way over the 14. At a leg E, could be a peak E. But if we are to see the nine period moving average over the next month go pink, the price of the Dow would have to be under 40,600. Uh, that's just the way I'm looking at it right now. So, um, those are the parameters I'd be looking at. I'm not, I don't feel that we need to be aggressively long right now. And I don't feel at this particular point that I want to be, um, other than a trading position in an index, short. Now, let me just go through this. I'm always looking for a peak D or higher to have to, to at least initiate some kind of reversal pattern. If you go to IBM, it went to a peak D a week and a half ago. It also had a round number of 232. <clears throat> I said, uh, when we were looking at it the other day, I said, you've got to be a little careful. But my anticipation was that IBM had surprised to the upside many times. I couldn't predict what was going to happen with IBM. All the technicals were absolutely fabulous. Look, even now with this massive pullback, 13 points down at 219.08, when the high was at 237.37 on the 15th, 237.37, let me just type that in, uh, 237.37. And I can't see IBM now taking out that high, at least not in this phase. It has to consolidate first. And it is a leg E going to a peak E in the weekly chart and a leg D in the monthly chart. So all, everything I'm looking at here, just purely based on the Chapman methodology of the notation, says this is where you've got to be somewhat careful. Um, the weekly chart still, all the technicals are fabulous. 
Oh, and we're watching it. So that's IBM. Look what happened to UNH, also a Dow stock. <clears throat> it goes to a peak D, double top, this, this cup formation. Um, I thought I'd drawn it in. I guess I didn't. Going from 600 round number back in around about the 4th of September to the most recent high at 600 and right there. So 600 round number open. Uh, that was open on the 4th. It went to 607.04, and the high on the 14th of October was 608.63. I mean, isn't that amazing? Less than two points for the double top. I didn't draw this in. I don't know why I didn't draw it in. Oh, because I don't. I usually watch UNH, United Health, just as kind of a, a proxy for the sector. And I, I, we don't ever trade it or even have a position in it. I'm not sure why, because it's been a fantastic position for years. Look at this. To the plumb line left side low. Of course, I'm doing this in retrospect, but that doesn't matter. Look, that's the high on the 9th. That's the low on the uh, 24th of September. The number of bars on the left from the high to the low equaled exactly and almost to the penny within $2.00 of the high that was made. Um, I didn't do it in the Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent, uh, repellent line. So I usually take the left side low right there. And I, <laughs> I look at that. My goodness. I would have been completely confused by that big break to the upside that failed. That was around about the 2nd and 3rd of October. Anyway, uh, the problem with this is that uh, the daily chart is very negative. But the weekly chart has gone to a peak F. I'm calling it an F for now. There's nothing else that I could do. And the 9 is still way over the 14. And the monthly chart, I'm still calling this a B for the moment. <laughs> so this is the thing that we're looking at some stocks. Look at look at Tesla. Yesterday, I think I went through the analysis. And what I was saying is that this particular pattern, where you make this little dreaded H pattern, the 200 period moving average of 214.92 was really important to hold. It went under it, but with earnings coming out and the fact that so many times over the years, Musk has managed to come out with some kind of statement that just clobbers the shorts. Um, I'd said, let's watch the upside, and the upside said, if, it can, if uh, somehow or other Tesla could test the 223 to 227 level, I'm not sure how it could do that, but if it could do that, that would be positive because it could start to go into the gap towards the upside of the gap. But if it closes at any point under 208, that's a real problem. Well, lo and behold, it gapped up today. It's up 35, 35 points, up 16.5% at 249.32. Where is it? It's in the next area of resistance and that candle high of the 4th of October, which is at 250.96. Today's high is 251.10. We went above that. And look, we're drawn in the weekly ch chart. I said this rectangle with a cup formation. It's a work in progress. I have no idea how it's going to unfold, but it is kind of trapped between the 271 round number high. And I had actually said the weekly 201 level on the... Uh, on the weekly chart of Tesla. And look at that, look at that uh, monthly chart. Suddenly it comes back to life again. Isn't that amazing? All right, so that's what we're looking at. Now, I'm going to just briefly uh, talk about um, the dollar. The dollar's had a spectacular move. It's gone to a leg E, could be a peak E <clears throat> today. It's almost like it's an independent. It just it made this arch formation. I said if the dollar can hold this inside Ch Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. You know we're always talking about channels and mini channels, and I worked on channels since I hand drew charts back on engineering paper back in the 1990s. Going to the into I think I stopped uh, right as we went to the 2000 highs. I did I did it uh, automatically. But there were still one or two charts that I, I had by hand. But most importantly, what we're looking at <clears throat> is this break of using as a rocket ship propellant this inside track 
as the MACD was really moving higher and the stochastic was flattening out, uh, had a big move and then flattened out, that was a big deal. So the dollar, we've been long the dollar since 2018. That's just irrelevant to this particular conversation. What is relevant is that that weekly chart has got a single leg A to the upside. Now, as I see it, the dollar at this particular point, I think that's going to change over the coming years. But at this particular point, the dollar is still the currency of import. It is the currency that internationally is being used. I think that's been moderated a little bit. Other countries are starting to do some some exchanges that, that kind of avoid their paying just in dollars. But so far, the dollar's it. And this is a really good move. What happens over the next month is going to be very important. I'll be back. We'll talk about it. Now the dollar's down. Now 92 and the SP's up 11. Basel Chapman, Tiger Dick, Mission Zala. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
Hi, Bo. So let, let me do a bunch of things here. And yes, uh, Rick, that's a good question. Peak C1, C2. Let me just do this very quickly. I, I'll spend a little more time on it tomorrow. Um, C1, C2 in the Chapman wave is where instead of going one penny higher to get to the D, you either fail right at exactly the same high, so it doesn't make a new peak at C, or you go just underneath it and I have my, one of my technicals, like the unbalanced volume or the, or the slow stochastic, has a little wiggle or oh, the relative strength index, which says at that point you could have made a D, but you just didn't have that extra strength. But everything about it looks like it should have been a D. So in the S&P, look what I did. Um, <clears throat> we had right here at 56.51.62 on... Was that the one? Yes. On the 26th of August, that was a peak C. I had a left side, right side price time match, which said that by the 29th, you should retest that high. But it was the next day, and it went to where? 56.51.37. So it was just fractionally off. And then you saw, look, the unbalanced volume was had a little wiggle. The stochastic had a little wiggle. So I said... I'm taking that as a peak C1, C2. And we had a sharp pullback. Thank goodness, because if I was waiting for a D, I would have had this huge spill to 5,400, 250 points, and then it ran up and it would have made the D. Instead, I treated this as a new buy signal to A, B, and then lo and behold, we had exactly the same thing, C1, C2, uh, right here. And I counted it as a peak. That was on the 30th of September, fractionally under it. And then what happened is <clears throat> we started a brand new buy signal to buy mode and went to a peak D. So what is a peak C1, C2? It's where instead of going fractionally higher to D, it just fails underneath it and then pulls back sharply. I like to be ahead. Years ago, what ha would happen is I get to the C, I'm waiting for a D, and I'm I, everything falls apart and... And then I look, I look closely over the over the hundreds of charts, and I say, you know, if you get a pullback even for one bar, and then fractionally go towards the D, but don't make it, treat it as if it's a high. And that's all. So that's the technique. I'll go through it again. So what I want to do right now is to say, um, and I, that's exactly what I've just done with the phantom peak in the Dow. I don't want to go through this again, but I'm just saying I am ready that this could be a, a deeper pullback. I don't think it is because my, some of my technicals, the most important is the 914 is still very strong. Right. With that said, we've just gone to the dollar. The dollar's at a, a recovery high, but it's going together with the inverse of the euro dollar, which is down at a low, which took out the left side low of July, uh, but it hasn't closed under that. And that just says this is a lot of weakness. If you look at the monthly chart, <clears throat> it says, hey, a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience, and so the euro is still very weak, and the technicals are still, the stochastics only at 6%. If you look at the USD JPY, <clears throat> um, that's gone to a higher high. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> this little frog in the throat keeps jumping around. I've got this as an F right now, but there could easily be an alternate count because that's an instant restart. So this becomes F. In my mind, I'm thinking F slash B, just to be ready. Nine is over the 14 price, is way over the nine. Back D is good. Relative strength is good. Stochastics flat at 94. That's fabulous. So everything else is the, the euro dollar, so the, <clears throat> the dollar yen currency pair should still work favorably. All right. So that puts me in the category of saying <clears throat> the bias right now still favors the dollar. Let me just do this real quickly. I want to get to do a, cover a lot of ground here. Gold is pulled back. I'm calling this an F for now. It could be an alternate account. I have no reason why to keep it as an alternate account. The stochastics at 86. It's, it's pulling back a little bit, kind of flattening, but really pulling back. I wouldn't be surprised if we slightly overbought in the gold leg E Doji candle in the weekly chart. We've still got a day and a half to go. Silver, silver has gone to, I could call this an alter, alternate count to G slash C. I really can't because um, it took out the starting point over there. Unless it's a, an unconventional flat-based restart, 
We should. I'm not ge- doing that. So this is a C and says silver should still go higher. So I'm watching it very closely, and I've got it. And I'm still calling it a leg C in the weekly chart, leg D in the monthly. Nothing wrong there. High grade copper. High grade copper is just going nowhere. Uh, 4.33, almost unchanged. It's just stuck on that 200 period exponential moving average. If I go to, I needed to do a bunch of things now. Yeah, just let me do this real quickly. Here's wheat. Does wheat? Uh, continuous contract. It's trading at 576, down two and a quarter. Made a peak D. I have to put in a down arrow because the daily has gone from a sell signal to a sell mode. Uh, but it's still holding really well. If it takes out 560 support in the next uh, week, that's going to be a big problem right now. It's just pulling back, uh, consolidating sideways uh, in the daily. The weekly is not very good looking. Soybeans, continuous contract, nice rally. Made a peak D at a Fibonacci level. Pulls back, is trading at uh, 1,006 and a half, uh, up nine. This is a gray leg. No, this is gray leg B. So there's your starting point, but it's still, I haven't got a buy signal or anything yet, let alone a buy mode. So this just says this is a bounce in wheat. If you look at the uh, weekly chart, I suspect I'm going to draw this in. Remember the arch that went to the lowercase m that was made back in that March, April, May period? I think we've got almost the same thing here with the 200 period, this time instead of support as resistance at 1,060. Here we are at 1,006. So let's go to corn. Uh, looking at corn, corn's at a much stronger rally, but it's the same pattern in the weekly chart. It says, you know what? Um, yes, you had left side, right side price time match. You didn't quite get. Uh, yes, you did take out the 380, uh, 380, 390 level support. So this is a mu much better looking chart, corn, but it's still got the same H, maybe goes to an M shape pattern in the weekly chart. Let's go to, uh, we want you to go to natural gas. Natural gas right now is bounding. <clears throat> ah, see all these letters? I do it by hand. It is automated. It went to a peak G right there, then it pulled back sharply. Uh, it's, a, it's just a bit of a bounce, but it's making lower lows and lower highs. Natural gas, even though the season's coming up, huh, not here in Boston. Wow, we're playing outdoor tennis. has been fantastic. Um, yeah, natural gas will have its day in the sun. Or is it in the cold? Um, but in the meantime, it's not doing very much. Just a bounce right now. Let's go to crude uh, crude oil right now. 200 period moving average resistance at 72.43. Big problem. It had a peak D. That's a down signal. A down. Right there. That's a down mode in the daily chart. Weekly chart just sideways. I hear a break coming up. Yep, break coming up. I'll be right back. Dow's down 89. S&P's up 17. Dow's a trap in Tiger Technician's Hour. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. 
Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. Let me just do this very quickly. We've got Coinbase. The question came, what about Coinbase? But it's going through a peak E. It's pulling back a little bit. The uh, weekly chart had this double U-shaped pattern, went to a W. Uh, and then pulled back sharply, went under the 200 period moving average, it became a springboard. It's trading at 207.20, up 8.22. So if I put this together with Bitcoin, it's a different chart. It, in many ways, it's a different chart pattern. <clears throat> the Bitcoin, I think that this is the cup in the monthly chart. This is the handle, not one of my favorite patterns, unless you get it exactly right, which is very much underneath the left side lip. And that's right here at 67.860. It's up 1,500. It's trying its best to break out of the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone to become a propellant zone. So the 9 pin moving average last week turned positive and it's staying positive this week. So I'm using this as my basis. And I'm saying I suspect that and the, the tide has changed. Going from low tide all the way in that March high that I said I think is a much high. It's a high that will be seeing lower highs and much lower lows. And then we'll see if it turns around to, for the tide to stop going down but to start going up. I think the tide is going up. I don't see how much it'll be until we take out this left side eye in Bitcoin, which is at, this is the 2nd of August, at 71595 um, so, yes, I do like it, and I think it's going higher. <clears throat> I think it's going to be a stair step move, and then there'll be a sudden, it'll become a favorite for the traders, I think, sometime in the next, uh, I would even say maybe three to six weeks is a chance, but it has to hold. This is Bitcoin itself. Uh, must hold support at, <clears throat> I would put it at 67,000 right now, 800. I'd put it at, if it closes under 62,000 in the next three weeks, that's a problem. But I do think it has that chance. So that's uh, that's that. Next one was Costco. Costco trading right now, <clears throat> almost at all-time highs, but it's starting to fail. I think that Costco is taking well-deserved rest. I don't see it breaking down as of now. <clears throat> 
But in the retail index RTH, if the RTH trading at, and I should go to the XRT, that's a much better one, XRT, which is the S&P <clears throat> Spider Retail Fund, if that trading is 75 in the next three weeks, trades under 73, that's a problem. So Costco, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm saying the upside might be limited to the 920 to 930 area. It's trading at 893 right now. My biggest concern is making lower highs and somewhat lower lows. If it trades under 875 in the next two weeks, I think it's going to go quite a bit lower. So that's Costco. Next question was fast. Fastenal, something I've followed forever. Don't have any position. Uh, gone to a leg D in the weekly chart. This is beautiful left side, right side price time match. Oh, I don't know if I'm able to do it right now. Let me just do the daily. So the daily is going to peak A, peak B. Oh, ho, ho. Here we go. Peak A. And this is fossil. This is industrial staples. To me, this is like packaging or anything like that. It's telling us a huge amount about what's going on in the economy. And so far, it's saying economy so far is very good. But we've just gone to a peak D and we're having a bit of a rest. So watch this closely. I like it very much. I don't know if I'd be short this stock. Um, on the upside, if it can close above seven, if it closes above 79.50, 80, somewhere around that area, that's very positive. But I think the upside now is going to be a little bit limited. But at this point, that wick in that big gap up must have been earnings in, let's call it in the 72s. At 75, 68, in the next two weeks, if Fastenal closes under 71.50, It'll go into that gap and then probably go lower. But at this particular point, it's holding really well. Next question. Let me check my notes here. Did that, did that, did that. Uh, did that, did that. Oh, F, uh, Newmont Mining. Newmont Mining came out with earnings. Um, it's, oh, wow. <clears throat> it's down almost $5 at 52.84. It made a peak E. I think I spoke about this. I said, yes, this chap wave inside track repellent zone. You've also got a time lapse that says the number of bars from that peak D to that peak C and then the C to that E kind of matches. So you've got to watch it closely. So, you know, it's been a spectacular. So look at the weekly chart. You say, oh, ho hum. It's been fantastic. It didn't. This is a perfect example of the chap wave. There we go. Look at that peak D. And two bars later, it goes to an E slash A, F slash B, C, G slash C, and that never, there's never an H. So it went to the D, in leg D in the weekly chart, whoosh, to the downside. Weekly chart's still fabulous. Monthly charts improved a lot. And the daily chart said, you know what, I was getting a little bit overbought. This is a little deeper than I would have anticipated. I don't know what the news is. Hit 56. Look, yesterday it had this three days in a row. It went to 58.71 on the 21st, 58.72 penny higher uh, the next day on the 22nd. Today is the 23rd and went to 58.63 uh, yesterday. So yesterday and today it gapped down. I, not an island reversal, but close. Yeah, so just a digestive phase. I would not do any buying. I'd wait. But if we can get into the 51 to 50 area, Give, a, give, give me a yell. That's when we'll look at it together. Uh, our gold stock is pulling back a little bit today, but it's done quite nicely, not as great as it should have done. And a number of stocks are really quite disappointing in many ways. So next question came in. I just want to get to all the questions. CLSK. CLSK. Oh, I know this one. What's CLSK? I know the symbol so well. Bet I haven't got it notated. Yeah, I do. Clean Spark. Went to a peak C. Then a D, D is where other things can happen, and it's digesting gains. I like this very much. I've liked it for a long time, <clears throat> but I would not call it a trading vehicle. I'd say it's a positioning vehicle. So you've got to look at this long-term Clean Spark Inc. <clears throat> um, it's pulling back a little bit. At this particular point, am I hearing any music? No, I'm not. <clears throat> uh, nine period moving average. It's under it right now. I just think it's digesting gains. Um, if you are long, I would still be holding the long position. But be prepared that if this at 11, at 12, 18, if it closes under 11.10, uh, the digestive phase is going to go on a little bit longer. But as I say, 
It's a very long-term position. I think it's in play, but right now it's digest huge gain. Going from eight to 30, I'm impressed. Uh, that's CLSKP spot. And I'll be right back down to 143 as it up 10. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So just a real quickly, I was asked about the um, about the uh, the dreaded H pattern, the lowercase h, where you test the left side low, <laughs> or the green reverse Y. Um, what do I look for? So uh, let me just see. I'll just do this very quickly. So here we've got the exact thing that I was talking about. You've got that um, at 73.40 Solventum SOLV uh, made a high, pulled back to about the uh, 65 level, and then it ran back and it made a fractional new high. But it, but it only closed once above it, and now it's making the cup and handle pattern that says there's a chance that it's going to go to a slightly higher high so that's the same thing i was looking at um uh tesla and that was the exact reverse look here's your dreaded h and it failed here's your another dreaded h and it went under it didn't close below it and then all of a sudden it gaps up so you want to look at these patterns to say where would the resistance and where would the support be? All right, let me just do this very quickly as we're going to wrap up here. And then Steve is away, so um, I'm sure it'll be a, a replayed broadcast. But what I want you to say is I don't like this action at all. 137 down in the Dow. 
I'm, I'm beginning to say I have to think in notation that I have to lean towards it a peak E here because it's a peak D in the uh, S&P. But that nine period moving average, as long as it holds, there could at any point be a sudden up spike. I don't know what's going to do that. I, I need from now I have to include the news. It's not I couldn't care about the candidates per se. I'm listening to the media and I'm just going to go to the formal ABC, NBC, CBS for the moment. And I'll be talking about that because I think it's imperative in terms of market response and analysis just on the media is uh, how things are reported. And that's going to be very important. Uh, it's got nothing to do with who you vote for, what you vote for. It has to do with how the media accounts for things. So let's just do this. The volatility index right now, as we go to the break, uh, is up 0.08, 19.30.